Hello guys, Safik of it, and today we're going to have a little bit of fun with a uh, conversion. Uh, quick backstory, so I've decided to enter hopefully my first competition um, or tournament um, at a local shop 40k in Colchester. Uh, something in December's cropping up which could be awesome. And I've decided in my infinite wisdom to go and use the Grey Company or the Rangers of the North, you know, the Rangers as the army to use for this tournament. It should be good fun. Um, going for the points list and the benefits. I've always been, back in the day, I was always more, more of a, an Arnor boy than a, uh, you know, Rangers, you know, fan. Just because the way they played, I didn't, I don't know, it, just, it, it didn't appeal to me, but I love the miniatures. Uh, so I'd always use them as an ally to Arnor. But obviously that's different now, they're a completely separate category. And because of that, looking at their stats, how it works, I absolutely love what they've uh, what they've achieved with the get with the the well, the army the the group the, the the clan you know whatever I really love what Games Workshop have done so obviously there's one huge flaw in uh, Games Workshop's uh, modeling range I say flaw just uh, you know they have to necessity you know put a necessity on these things so to be fair they can't do it and that is of course mounted ranges of the north dun 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 uh, I can see where this video might be going now hopefully hmm. Yes, of course, they don't have any existing models. I know there's third party models out there, um, which looks superb. But me being me, I want to try and keep it all you know, tied in with the existing product range. Just my own personal preference, nothing wrong with third parties. And I fully, you know, say go for it, you know, what suits you and that, and you know, go for it. But this is for those people out there that want to have a, an idea of how to convert models to make a rank mounted ranger um, of the north um, I think it's a worthwhile investment they're 10 points more for a horse and you've got ranger of the north with you know might well fight you know you, you, with a couple of them you should be looking at a decent uh, you know they're going to be able to do objectives harass the enemy they're going to be pretty good and so I thought I'd do a little vlog here of uh, of building one of converting one, building one, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to go through this bit by bit and um, what I recommend to an extent. Uh, first thing before I go through any of this stuff, because I'm sure all you good hobbyists out there probably have all this stuff, but for Christ's sake, really think hard about how you want the model to finish, how you want it to look. At the end of the day, it's your model. Do whatever the hell you want, whatever makes you happy. If it makes you happy, roll with it, baby. Um, but if you want something to look good and you want it to really sort of capture your opponent's eye or your fellow friends and collector's eyes, think about the pose. That's what I've gone for. So that's my that's the first and foremost piece of advice. So before we sort of go off on a tangent. So firstly, for a conversion process of a range of the north on horseback. So you're going to need a horse and someone that can actually be mounted upon a horse. So we have a normal uh, warrior of Rohan or you know, horsemen of Rohan, whatever to call them, you know, you know what I'm talking about. These bad boys, I recommend one of these, or a model which will sit on a horse and fits with a ranger look. I have an fellow a fellowship Aragorn. I've chosen this fellowship Aragorn because I've got them cheap on eBay. I've already got one. But this dude is he's got all the bits he needs. He's got all the kick, all the thing, and of course he you know I'm liking this pose. My thought for this pose is basically this dude's spear hand and spear going to get lopped off. Our poor Aragorn's hand's going to get lopped off and replaced with this spear and hand. Another way of doing a spear, if you wanted, is to use a brass or is a brass or copper uh, thin tube. You can get off of eBay, modeling supplies, hobby supplies. Use that as well. But for this and for the what I have at the moment, I'm more than happy and comfortable to just roll with a plastic spear as it is here. I can always change it again at a later date. It's not the end of the world. So that's that. The shield probably isn't going to be needed so I'll add that to my bits collection. Um, yes yeah, so that's the two main components for the model and obviously the horse. Happy days. So that's that's what you'll need. You'll need to plan out you know the miniatures and the pieces you want to use to create your range of the north with. So for me it's going to be the top half of Aragorn, a hand swap and obviously his groin and legs are going to get lopped off to be replaced with matey's groin and legs and matey's hand. The head, Aragorn's head, or Range of the North head, I'm, I'm, I'm going to sort of go with this as I'm building this mini. 
um, but I'm thinking of green stuff to go over his face to create a hood and obviously we will need some green stuff more than likely to cover up any gaps that obviously gluing these two pieces together will uh, more than likely create. So okay, that's the that's the, the main element there. You need to choose what you want to do with your miniatures. You can use normal range of the North models, Duna Day models, as long as you have a good idea, you know, this is just an example, as long as you have a good idea models, go for it. Next up, you will most likely need a decent Stanley knife blade. Um, I've gone for a long inch one. Uh, you probably you can, you can use a small one, obviously. Um, I just treat myself to a new blade, actually, quite decent. It's a safety blade as well, so if it snaps off, it's, it's contained. It doesn't, you know, there's not a chance of it shattering, which is always good. You may well need a hobby vice to hold the model in place whilst you're uh, cutting away at him. So again, hobby vice. I got this for about six, seven pounds in home base, and it's decent. Uh, a hacksaw. Or some sort of modelling saw. This is a small little saw, this is all I need. It's more than likely all you guys are going to need. And of course, uh, some spare blades just in case, you know, anything happens. And I had just mentioned it. Oh, here it is. And I'm a little bit low on this stuff, but we should be okay. You will need some green stuff, okay? Definitely going to need some green stuff. Or if you're very good with glues, you might be able to use the glue to seal it up. But you will need to use the glue to 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 mould pieces, shape things, do things. Okay, guys, I'm very excited. So I'm going to do the first stage. Oh, sorry. And obviously for green stuff, you will need moulding tools as well. I've got one homemade one, which is just you know, the end of an old paintbrush I've sort of shaped. And this, fun enough, is a Play-Doh, uh, <laughs> just a knife spatula. My little girl would be ever so pleased if she knew I was using her toys. Um, but I actually find this does work for bigger wave details, such as shaping a cloak, things like that. So yeah, but definitely get some decent moulding tools, or if you're happy making your own sort of bits and bobs, if it works for you, go with it. But this is the stuff you're going to need, guys. Obviously glues as well. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sort of do a bit of you know progress. I'm probably going to try and just do the chopping up parts for the moment and I shall be back shortly with the next section. Here we go. Okay guys, so progress has gone on and we've now got the pieces we need to make our range of the north. So a couple of tools I did forget to mention in my haste um, and you will need a file. Well, you might need a file, it depends on how you're working it. If you're going to be using green stuff, you won't, but you will need a file if not. And obviously some pliers as well, so I forgot to mention them. And obviously, depending on when you're doing this time of day, you may well need a modelling light, or just a tabletop light. I call it a modelling light, but you will need some decent lighting to see what you're doing. So, okay, this is where I'm at so far. Horsey's gluing, just over there. She's gluing up nicely. So we have one chopped up Aragorn. Poor little fella. Poor bloke, look at him. So he's, he's not in the best of states. So his left hand, his right hand, sorry, is gone. And the, the pommel of the sword has been um, filed away. I've managed to cut, it's more of a hack at the moment to be honest, but I've, because uh, I want to keep the metal detail on his back, so I've managed to work around this, so it's all there, it's all intact. You've got the bow, you've got the, the roll up, you've got the arrows in the sack, and obviously, well, obviously the, the other part of the bow. And around the front, you can see his belt, there's only a little bit of his belt left, and that's at the very top there, and there's the back where all his belongings are. So I've worked around that um, and that's the top half of him done. I'm pleased with how that come out. Have the spear. Here we are, there's the spear hand. So my plan is to have this. I'm going to have it in a couple of positions as yet. I'll play around with it near the end but he's either going to be holding the spear sort of down by his side or uh, I might try and angle it so he's got it sort of point down the ground maybe or he's pointing it up. We'll sort of see. But that's the spear with the arm done. I've you know, just smoothed it down as well. All the usual. Bottom of Aragorn's feet. Uh, we'll see how we do with this. I may well try and chop his feet off um, and stick them onto the main, onto the horseman's legs instead. I'm not entirely sure. So we'll keep this piece just for now. It's always best to keep all the bits you've got with you, just to sort of give you a few options before you chuck it all in the bin and have a job trying to find it again. And here's the rider's legs. So cleanly cut through the hacksaw, same as Aragorn, obviously. Now the only thing is with this dude, I'm going to have to spend a little bit more fiddly time. Because his roll up and his arrows and whatnot are on his left side, whereas Aragorn stuff sits on the right. So I'm going to use a file and probably my hacksaw again, maybe, <laughs> to get rid of that sack and to get rid of his hand there, because we don't need that hand, because 
everyone's got a right hand, a left hand, sorry. And that left hand, we're going to be reposing, so it's going to actually be bent. I'm going to probably have to hack it, so I'm going to have to cut it at the elbow. Okay, I'm going to have to cut it at the elbow, or if I can, I might try and bend it, we'll see. But either way, that arm is actually going to come across more of an angle to make it look like he's holding onto horse's reins. That's the plan, anyway. We'll see how we do, see how we do. So yeah, so this left hand, what's left of it, will have to go. I'm pleased with managed to keep the belt nicely intact, so I can use that as the belt for poor old Aragorn. And you can see here you've got the plated, um, or lamella, you know, plate armour, sort of the, the, the scales, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to do a number of things as I go along with this little project. I may well keep it and paint it on as if it's a um a hal Holberg, Halberg padded, you know, jacket sort of hiding, you know, sort of showing itself from underneath. Or I might use the file and just smooth that down. Just smooth it down and then paint it grey so it blends in with the sort of the undercover um of well I say the un the undercover the I don't know what you want to call it really, the leather armour, whatever that's meant to be, the fine, the smooth piece of art clothing that Aragorn has that normally sort of drapes down, you know, the surcoat, trench coat, whatever you want to call it. I might try and blend it in and make it into that. Um, and then from there, well, we'll get these bits done first and then I'll show you sort of the progress from there and then we'll start finally gluing this piece together. So fingers crossed guys. Okie dokie then, so just spent a little bit longer than I expected to be quite honest on tidying up these pieces now. They're now fitting quite nicely. Well I say fitting quite nicely, there's some quite big gaps, but that's okay. So with one hand, this is how it's gonna sit. So I'm quite pleased with that. There is a big gap um, in the back. Let's see if that will focus maybe, not quite. Not quite. So Please, he's got all his backpack and stuff there. But there's a gap here. When these two bits are put together, that gap, right, sort of, just underneath my finger there, there's a big gap there. So that's where the green stuff's going to come into play, just to neat and tidy that all up. When you guys are doing this, don't get disheartened. You will find that there are mistakes. Um, you will find that there are going to be slight issues, but it's not going to be perfect because you're working with solid materials, you know, solid plastic, solid metal, or just plastics, whatever, you're not going to be able to get it a flush fit, you know, unless you've got some serious time and some seriously, seriously precision tools, it's not going to happen. So that's where the green stuff comes in effect, and as you can see, I've had quite a lot of fun here hacking away and sort of smoothing bits down stuff. Um, so this dude, as you can see, the his role has now gone completely. Um, all the other bits have gone. I've actually carved away some here on this back and that is to make way for Aragorn's uh, pouch and all the roll up bits and bobs there. So that sits quite nicely on top into this corner. If I put my finger there, there you go, in that corner that's where Aragorn's pouch and stuff sits which is perfect. Um, tied a few bits and bobs up. I've smoothed down what was obviously the, the, uh, the armour of the Rohan warrior rider. Um, smoothed it down. I will probably use a bit of green stuff just to sort of completely smooth it out. I want to paint it grey like I said before. Um, so now, basically, we're all good to start gluing this bad boy together. So I'm going to have to pin him because the joint isn't completely smooth. It's not completely flush. So it will make it weak. So I'm going to have to pin it. Uh, I think there's something I didn't actually use looking at. The... No, it's not. So Sorry guys, another thing that uh, you may well need. I didn't include it actually because it wasn't something I was particularly uh, counting on, if I'm honest. Um, but you will need a small, tiny drill piece. Yeah, your, your pinning, uh, pinning tool, little hand vice tool, whatever you want to call it. And you'll need that more than likely to give a bit of integrity, structure, uh, integrity to the structure. And I may well pin the hand as well. Yeah, I'll, p I'll pin the hand as well. Why not? It's best to keep it nice and strong. So yeah, you may well need a tiny uh, drill, tiny you know pin vice, whatever they call it, uh, to drill a couple of holes. Just give them a bit more strength. It wasn't something I was counting on myself, myself but uh, I think I will need it for this. So I'm going to set about getting this bad boy glued together. I'll show you what it looks like glued together. And then from there onto the green stuff and then we are done so about halfway through 
Time wise so far you can expect this to take anywhere for you guys anywhere between sort of 20 minutes to 40 minutes uh, depending on what you're doing how perfect you want it to be. I've actually taken slightly longer to be honest but that's because um, I've done this already um, but I'm trying, trying to make sure that this goes well for this little video so I'm sort of double double checking what I've already double checked <laughs> so it is taking me a, a fair bit longer but yeah it should take you guys 20 to 40 minutes to be at this stage maybe longer it's totally up to you really if you're enjoying doing it take your time bit by bit so yeah I'll glue this guy up and uh, we'll go from there well then I'm very very pleased with how this is turning out um, a lot more work as usual but it's come out nicely I haven't glued the spear on yet Spear arm is off, it's just been pinned. You can see a little pin sticking out of his hand there. That's all ready to go. I'm going to stick it on the very last minute once I've actually finished doing all the green stuff, uh, which is the next part of the process here currently. So what I've done is just sat on the horse at the moment, just sort of add the wow factor. So off we get, Ranger of the North. Oh, he says, here we go. So he has been pinned. And if I get him the light better, so you can see the gap there slightly, which I've slightly filled with super glue. And again, on the other side, see the gap there, you can see we've carved away some of the plastic, so this one now sits nicely, it's all tied in nicely with his legs. Uh, a bit of a gap there, again, some green stuff, and what I've done is I've used some pliers there to pinch his arm, bend it into shape, covering up the sin of the fact that this sword scabbard doesn't have a sword in it. So, well, whether that was meant to be the case or not, it's uh, well chipped away the plastic. There is no sword hilt or anything there. So, what I've done is I've repositioned his arm to make it seem like he's sort of holding on to his uh, sword or something, you know, getting ready for the charge. Just, you know, anything. He's sort of running, free running. He's not even holding this, the reins. He's so such a hardcore ranger. I think it kind of gives him a nice little pose. And as you can see, his arm is slightly mangled in the process. So, again, a little bit of green stuff will be needed just to uh, tidy that up. But this miniature is basically finished now. I'm really pleased with how this has come out. It's, you know, it's been a bit of a planning, lots of planning, and then a few things sort of I've had to change along the way. Um, but yeah, couldn't be happy with this actually. It's a little bit of green stuff is going to be needed. I'm going to green stuff his, uh, his hair or his head. Um, so he's got a hood. Uh, yeah, I think it's going, to come, it's going to come out quite nicely. Yeah, I'm pleased with this. Very pleased. So there you go. So that's that's how it's gone so far. He's changed quite a lot, really, isn't he, from his original pose and the the wide of Rohan as well. He's had one hell of a change. He's sort of been upgraded to Aragorn, and then Aragorn's been chopped around. So yeah, it's going well. So next time we see him, he should be nicely prettied up in green stuff, looking hench. See you guys in a second. Okay, then, guys. So he's finally finished really 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 pleased with how he's turned out I uh, had a few sort of moments of oh no this isn't going to work what a shame but persevered patience is the key with this guys um, and uh, and yeah this is the the end result so let just hang on a second let me just spin around for you so it's just loosely on the base again on the horse I should say sorry and uh, let's get a bit bit of a better it's quite late at night now, so I'm working with the best lights I can. So, here we are. Range of the North is finished in all his glory. Looks like apologies about the light, guys, because it's probably a bit dark and a bit shady. I do apologise about that. Let's see if I can get my lights to actually. Uh, see if I can move around. See if that might help a little bit. So if I pick him up. Okay, so here we go. Here he is. So what I've done then, you see him in all his glory. So I've just neatened him up, tidied him up, and I've given him a few mod cons. <laughs> a few extras. So we have got the green stuff has blended in the cloak nicely again, because obviously if you remember, if you go back, you'll see there's a massive gap here. Also his arm. There's a gap there as well. And also on the underside of his arm here. Because I'd used my pliers to obviously twist his arm round. So going around, we have a hood. Sculpted it in as best as I can. 
very pleased with how it's come out. Now, looking at it under the light, it does look quite blotchy. The green stuff, I'm sure you can see, it does look quite blotchy. But I can assure you, it is, well, smooth as can be. I think that my lamp is literally just picking up on every slight shadow that this is casting on. Um, so when it comes to the painting stage, that will probably cover up a lot of that. Any sort of blotchiness or any bits where it's not quite smooth down enough. I've not fully finished to be fair, but I was so excited to get this recorded up. So, anyway, yes, I've got the hood. Hood has been added just to sort of obviously give Aragorn a bit of a different face. So now he's now completely and utterly a Ranger of the North on mounted, on, on mounted, on horseback. He's mounted, so yeah, that's him. I've also green stuffed his bottom of his wrist there, so just to cover up the join. So it looks like I've made that look like the end of the coat that he's wearing, or the cloak, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so yeah, the spear's on. And uh, yeah, got some more green stuff around the back here, sorry. Don't even see a bit of that sort of angle. So you've got green stuff, all of them moulded in nicely. Green stuff there. Lots of green stuff on the back here. Took a long time to sort of mould it in and blend it into the plastics, which as you can probably tell, it's actually quite hard to tear in places, which I'm very pleased with. Um, pleased with the the hood. I'm pleased we've got a few highlights, you know, some you know some ripples of the material there. I'm going to smooth over this a little bit more because it does look a bit bobbly on the hood there, so we'll smooth it out. But there you go, guys. My range of the north finished. Um, I do hope this has helped you in some way, shape, or form. I will do a second part to this video, as you can see him painted up with the rest of my rangers. So sort of all themed up the rest of them. Obviously the base is going to be finished off because there's a bit of metal to this model and there's quite a lot of extra sort of weight with the green stuff. I am going to put something under the horse's front legs just to help give a bit of stability, give a bit more strength because if not I feel it's going to be very much prone to breaking um, and it'll just spoil the model. So I may well put some stones or some sort of balsa wood in there to make it look like the horse is actually jumping over something maybe maybe jumping over a uh, fallen tree who knows but yeah i'll definitely definitely strengthen up the horse at the front end um but apart from that he's finished he is finished i'm very very pleased i hope this has helped you guys um this is unfortunately like i say i couldn't get it you know to be so sort of free uh recording the whole time um something I'm going to start looking into funnily enough and getting actual some proper proper equipment so I can do some proper looking videos and be able to sort of do a bit more how to's a bit easier as well rather than sort of stage by stage and things but I do hope this has helped you I can find anything myself uh, myself 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 on uh, on YouTube or on anything really in terms of video type stuff it's very much just a couple of pictures um, so I wanted to try and make something that could be helpful to many people um, I hope this is, I genuinely do. Um, follow these stages bit by bit with the tools that I've got, what I recommend you use. And ultimately the best advice I can give you is with all the tools you've got, with all the planning you've got, just check and check and double check. Double check everything. I double, double, double checked everything because this was a video, I wanted it to be as good as I could get it. And I wanted the model to look as good as I could when it's finished-ish. <laughs> Um, so I was I was double checking even more than you guys probably would do, um, but key is don't rush it. Take your time, and also work with it. If something doesn't work straight away, try it again. Try something else. Keep at it. Keep persevering with what your what your plan is. What what's happening? You know, see if you can sort of work around it. Anything like that, and you will have a lot of success. So yeah, do let me know if you've enjoyed this video, guys. Do let me know what you think. Um, if you can, let me know about your conversions. Have you done, you know, Rangers of the North on horseback? Let me know. I'd love to see some of your uh, stuff or, you know, any links you might know, videos that I've missed. I'm going to do another one or two of these uh, mounted uh, Rangers of the North. Rangers of the North, sorry. Uh, you can tell it's getting late. Um, yeah, and uh, I think I'll do about three in total. That'll be, you know, quite a few points. So we're looking at 40 points each there, so... You know, plus spears, I think it's 41 points, one point spears. So, yeah, so three men on horseback, you're looking at what is that? So it's 40, 120, so 123 points for three men on horseback. But they've all got might, will, and fate. They can move quick, they can flank, they've got um, heroic shot, is it, I believe? So, yeah, they're going to come in handy. 
Uh, the tournament's coming up in December, I do believe, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. Yeah. My plan is hopefully to make a video where you can watch me do this in one fell swoop rather than sort of on off, on off, on off. But as I say, I do hope this has helped you guys. I really, really do. Uh, let me know what you think. And like I say, a second part will come along um, in the next week or two of me actually painting this guy up and getting him finished. I'm doing a commission at the moment of a uh, the new Theoden uh, miniature. So this this model currently isn't on my uh, you know priority list. Uh, my uh, commission model is, but um, I will get around to it eventually. Take it easy, guys. Thanks for watching as always. Always appreciate it. I have 114 subscribers now. I'm <laughs> forever humbled by that. I think that's awesome. For a little channel, just doing a few fun things, a few hobby bits, just sharing my interests with the world, with the world is uh, awesome. So yeah, from me and Range of the North, I uh, bid you a good night and I'll see you soon. Take it easy, guys.